I, 28 female, met my husband Jaden, 30, 10 years ago. At the time, he was a single dad to an infant baby girl, Lily, tween. I worked at the bakery he'd stop at every Saturday before their work, and eventually we started going out. We got married six years ago, and I legally adopted Lily soon after that. In my family, it's a tradition that the oldest daughter gets gifted an old sapphire ring on her tween birthday. The ring belonged to my grandmother, who gave it to my aunt, who gave it to me because all my cousins are male. Lily's birthday was a few months ago, and I gave the ring to her because she's my oldest daughter. She loves that ring more than anything. She put it on a chain to wear around her neck so that she could keep better track of it, and in the months that she's had it, I've never seen her take it off. My sister Mia, 24, is one of Lily's favorite people. Lily loves her aunt, and sometimes Mia will text to let me and Jaden know that she's picking Lily up from school to eat or go to the bookstore. The other day, I got one of those texts from Mia, so I told her to be safe, have fun, and make sure my daughter came home at a decent time because it was a school night. Lily got home about an hour after dinner, and she barely said hello to her dad or me before she went to her room. I thought that maybe she was just tired, so he and I didn't immediately ask her what was going on, but later that night I went to check on her because I wanted to be sure. When I walked into her room, I saw her crying. I asked her what was wrong and it took a minute. Still, she eventually told me that Mia took the ring from her because it's a family heirloom that's supposed to go to the actual oldest daughter. And because I adopted her, that means she isn't family. The only reason I didn't go to Mia's apartment that night to get it back was that I spent the rest of the evening reassuring Lily that she was my family. She is 100% my actual oldest daughter, no matter what our DNA or anyone else says. I left Mia a voicemail the next morning, telling her to return the ring before I drove over there and got it myself. She texted, saying she would only give it to me if I had a daughter before she did, but until then, she'd keep it safe to make sure I didn't give it back to the wrong person. So then I told her that if she didn't return the ring by 2pm that day, I would be calling the police and reporting it stolen. She started texting like crazy, saying I was being ridiculous and doing too much. Our mom is on it now too, and she thinks saying I'd contact the police was taking it too far, and that Mia was only trying to keep to the family tradition. Am I the idiot for threatening to call the police to get back a ring that my sister took from my daughter? Not the idiot! She took a birthday gift from your child and told that child that she wasn't family. Your sister is lucky that all you did was say you'd call the cops. I'd be very concerned about what other things Fun Aunt was saying or doing all those other times now. This exactly. There are two possibilities. She played the long game from the start and got close to Lily, knowing the end game, or the idea dawned on her recently, and she took the opportunity to steal and crush a child that looked up to her. Neither is excusable. I hope OP takes your no-contact advice because there's no way those people should be around children or anyone, really. OP, please remove your permission for your mother and sister to pick up your daughter from school. Who knows what else they decide to tell her and do. Mia has been jealous of OP having the ring for years and decided to destroy Lily to get it. What a sad, miserable person. OP, call the cops. If Mia was right about who should get the ring next, it's yours until that person turns 11. Said person does not even exist yet, so the ring is clearly yours, even by Mia's warped standards. My husband and I are expecting our first baby. We've had some ups and downs with his parents because they don't understand boundaries, but overall it's been really good. For some context, I, 24 female, come from an abusive home and I can't stand being touched. Before getting pregnant, this wasn't a problem with my in-laws, but now that I'm carrying a baby, it's been awful with my mother-in-law and my sister-in-law because they think they can touch my belly whenever they want to. Both my husband and I have talked to them and said that while I would rather they don't touch me at all, I can understand this is a big thing as a family, so I would simply like being asked instead of just feeling a hand at random times, but they rarely do it, so I move when they touch me. Now on to the subject. A week ago, my best friend threw me a baby shower and I invited my in-laws, and since I don't have any blood family left, we let them invite 10 more people, which included aunts, cousins, and my husband's grandparents. It was an overall lovely moment, but at one time I was sitting eating cake while my mother-in-law talked with my father-in-law's sister, and while telling her something about the baby, she put her hand on my belly and, I don't know, I just didn't like it. So I took her hand, removed it, and said, No, no, you know I've told you not to touch without asking first. You know how to ask first, do you? It's easy, with the most condescending voice I had. 
So my mother-in-law and my father-in-law's sister looked at me shocked, and then my father-in-law's sister laughed, but my mother-in-law got red in the face. When it was done, my mother-in-law approached me and said that what I did wasn't nice and she just slipped, so I didn't have to treat her like a kid. I just smiled and said that touching me after being asked a million times not to was kid's behavior, and I just called her out on that. She left very deflated, and when we got home, my father-in-law called my husband and said he would love for us to apologize to each other, but I said no, so he called me an idiot. Not the idiot. Sometimes people don't understand when you ask nicely. My friend grabbed a stranger's boob when the stranger touched her belly. The stranger was shocked and my friend said, Oh, I thought we were grabbing each other's bodies. My bad. Everyone thinks being pregnant makes you public property. I hate it. Stand your ground, enforce your boundaries and grab her boob every time. I was far more dramatic when I was pregnant. I wore a shirt that said, You can touch my belly if I can punch your face. The proper response from your mother-in-law would have been, I'm so sorry, OP, you're right. You've been very clear about this and I let it slip my mind. I'll remember to ask permission before touching you in the future. Please forgive me. There, done and dusted. But instead, she chose to be offended. My mother-in-law was so bad for it, I went out and bought three t-shirts that say, Do not touch the bump, and deliberately wore them every time I had to see her. When I finally snapped, she acted like I was the devil himself. Insane. I don't think anyone appreciates being touched without consent, let alone someone with an aversion to being touched in the first place. If someone can't respect your wishes, even after being told many times, they deserve to be called out. Also, being asked to apologize because you both were at fault is infuriating, especially when you weren't at fault. I, 30 female, have a daughter, Lily, a young child. My brother, James, 32, and his wife, Brittany, 26, married in July. I was friendly with Brittany before they were dating and engaged, but we weren't friends. James and I are very close, though. When James first proposed to Brittany and they started wedding planning, it was made very clear to me that Lily and I would be part of the wedding. Throughout the wedding planning process, it was reiterated that Lily would be a flower girl and I would be the maid of honor. A few weeks before the wedding, Brittany came to my house to talk. She explained that her family had raised concerns about kids attending the wedding, and Brittany and James decided to make the ceremony child-free, but that Lily was more than welcome to come to the reception. So I tell her something along the lines of, Okay, it's your wedding. I love my brother, so I'll do whatever he asks of me. Fast forward to the rehearsal, we line up and everything is going as expected until Brittany's three nieces, all under eight, walk in as junior bridesmaids. Of course, I'm confused and slightly annoyed, but whatever. After, James pulls me to the side and says that Brittany was worried that Lily would accidentally ruin the wedding with a temper tantrum, and that's why they lied about the wedding being child-free. I explained to James that I was angry and it hurt that they thought that about my child, but it was fine. I had already arranged for my friend to watch Lily during the ceremony and then meet me for the reception. James said he understood my feelings and disagreed with Lily not being invited. On the day of the wedding, Brittany asked where Lily was and why she wasn't there while we got ready. I explained that she was with a friend and would be at the reception later. Brittany then says she's going to call so Lily can be brought over for the pictures, because people will ask why she's missing in them, making her look bad. I told her she could call, but my friend knew the situation and won't come until I asked her to. Brittany called James to have him make me stop being a petty witch, but he said he knew the plan and didn't see a problem with it. She then asked what they're supposed to tell people when they look at photos and ask where Lily is. I said to tell them that she wasn't invited since she has too many temper tantrums. After that, she called me a witch and said I was taking things too personally. After that, the wedding was awkward to say the least. There was a lot of drama within the wedding party that had nothing to do with this situation. James texted out family group chats with a link to the wedding photos. Now the extended family has been reaching out wanting to know why Lily isn't in any pictures, and I've explained the situation. My mom is on my side, but all my aunts and uncles say that I'm a petty idiot. So, am I the idiot? What an absolute crap show. Not the idiot. Your daughter wasn't invited, so why should she be in pictures? Although, I'm curious. Why is your family so concerned about your daughter having a temper tantrum? Is this a pattern with her? How are you a maid of honor without knowing other kids would be involved in the wedding? No, she doesn't throw temper tantrums regularly. It's definitely not a pattern and is very out of the norm for her. I was originally just a bridesmaid, but drama within the wedding party is the reason Brittany promoted me to maid of honor.
The bride and groom made their choices clear. Who comes and doesn't is their choice, nobody else's. Lying to you about it was super crappy, no excuse for them there. They're trying to have their cake and eat it too, make it seem like the kids were warmly welcomed when in fact, Lily was coldly excluded. It's their wedding day and you must respect that, but that doesn't mean having your daughter become a prop for the official photos or assisting them in misleading the family and relatives by implying Lily was invited when she wasn't. Exactly. She got her wish. Lily was not at the wedding and was at the reception, which is why sometimes we must be careful what we wish for. The photos represent things perfectly. When people ask, be sure to add how the bride lied to you about the wedding being child-free. So, for background information, I'm nearly an adult female and I live with my mom. I moved in after going no contact with my father. Within the last year, my mom and I have started arguing. She expects me to go to school, work my main job, work at my internship that she pressured me into getting, and clean the house. I'm so overwhelmed at all times and I can barely keep up. I've tried telling her about this, but she won't listen. She won't listen to me no matter how I approach the situation. I'm honestly at my breaking point. So about two months ago, we had another big fight and I told her that if she didn't make any effort to listen to me or acknowledge my feelings, I would stop putting effort into our relationship. I waited a while and when I realized nothing was changing, I stopped putting effort into our relationship completely. I started only giving her one-word responses and tried to be away from the house when she was there. I would only leave my bedroom to use the bathroom. Today, she texted me and asked about my senior pictures and how to look at them online. I said that she couldn't because there was no way for her to log in, and it wasn't a big deal because my grandmother and I had already ordered them, and they were on the way, and she could see them then. She blew up and accused me of not including her in ordering my senior pictures. This isn't true because two days before when we were at my grandmother's, I said they were available to order and she didn't say a word. So I reminded her of that and she was making a huge deal out of nothing. She then started threatening me with putting Life360 on my phone. She always threatens me with that when she's mad. But this time I told her no, that she wouldn't be doing that because it's my phone and I paid for it. My grandmother bought the phone for my birthday and I pay my phone bill. She said that this was her damn house and that my car was hers too. That's also not true because the car was a gift from my grandmother for my last birthday. I said that she could start paying for the insurance and gas if it was her car. She told me I could either put Life360 on my phone or she would take my car. I said, okay, you can find a way for me to get to school 30 minutes away, work 45 minutes away, and my internship 25 minutes away. After arguing back and forth for at least 45 minutes, I told her that she was one of the most selfish and childish people I knew, that I hated being around her and talking to her, and that she had destroyed our relationship. I again told her that she never listens to me and constantly invalidates me and my feelings. She said she doesn't listen because I'm always attacking her. I then told her that if she continued treating me this way, I would be looking into emancipation. I've been crying since this morning because I love my mom, but I don't understand why she's been treating me like this. So am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your mother is very dismissive of you, your feelings, and your emotional well-being and stress. She also seems quite entitled with her threatening to take away things from you that she had no right to, as she didn't buy them or contribute to them. Her lack of care towards you would have worn away at your relationship, regardless of if you'd stopped putting effort into the relationship. She clearly had stopped doing that a while ago. Your mother not listening to you when you informed her of the photos is evidence of that. I'm sorry that you're in such a difficult place right now, OP. I hope you're able to reach out to people in your life for support. The mom is psycho and you all act like it's the kid's responsibility to roll over and take it. Putting Life360 on anyone's phone would destroy any relationship. Her pathetic attempts to control you, your life, and your stuff are laughable. You get free emancipation in less than a year. Just don't engage to the best of your ability until then. Update. I guess this is how you do an update. I'm really new here, so let me know if I'm wrong. So I just got done trying to talk to my mom. I tried talking to her calmly about my feelings and how overwhelmed I've been and how she makes me feel bad. It was mostly her screaming, laughing, scoffing, and mocking me. She said some pretty terrible things, too. She called me a liar, ungrateful, unforgiving, selfish, lazy, manipulative, and crazy. She's letting me use my car for work and school, but that's it, so I guess that's good. 
I appreciate all of your advice and kind words. It means a lot. We, the company, had a new employee, Christina, working in our section and she's a nice lady in her late thirties. She's married with kids. We had several conversations before. We worked close by and one time she was sitting and moved to the side and her already showing cleavage got clearer. The office got awkward and the guys there looked down. It was obviously something minor but it kept happening. I had a couple of our male co-workers complain to me about Christina's cleavage. I'm more of a tomboy woman so the men feel comfortable enough around me. They were saying that having to be forced to encounter a similar situation to the one I mentioned makes them uncomfortable. I couldn't help but notice that all the clothes, tops specifically, that Christina wears are designed to show cleavage. I brought it up to her the next day and casually pointed out how her cleavage was showing. She said nothing, just nodded at me. So I went ahead and asked if she deliberately wore clothes that showed her cleavage. She looked offended and asked if there was a problem. I flat out said that it felt weird to me if this was the case and that a married woman is okay showing her cleavage in a professional workplace with male co-workers around. She got upset and asked how it was any of my business what she chose to wear. Respectfully, I told her she could wear whatever she wanted, but some employees just don't feel comfortable having been exposed to this kind of stuff at work. She told me that it was none of my business and that those who have an issue with her clothes should stop being cowards hiding behind me and come talk to her face to face. We argued and some of my female co-workers agreed with me, though they said I could have phrased this better. Christina started avoiding half of us, which seemed unprofessional because part of our job is to interact, but she chose to stay away. I tried talking to her and another argument started with her saying she'd take this to the administrators if I keep it up, but I was really just trying to talk things out. Am I the idiot for what I said to her? Those male colleagues must be very proud of you. That's what your behavior is about, right? You are not like the other girls. The boys like you. Her cleavage is none of your business, idiot. Suppose she does want to wear tops that showcase her décolletage. That's not anyone's business. Her sartorial choices are hers. What you and the men in the office are doing is body shaming. If I were her, I would go to HR with this. If the men in the office are uncomfortable, maybe someone needs to have a talk with them about self-control. Shame on you for getting in on this. You are the idiot and way out of line. Being a woman doesn't give you any right to dictate dress from your co-workers. You're not her boss. You're not even quoting a dress code violation. You're just trying to force her to align to what you decided is right. Being married with kids is irrelevant information. Keep your nose in your own business and if other employees try to gossip to you, then keep it to yourself.